Version. Okay, folks, we're broadcasting, I'm told, so we'll get started. Don't forget to silence phones or anything else prone to make noise. Anything for us goes to Mr. Curran. We'll begin with an invocation by Commissioner Ott and a pledge by Commissioner Orfel. If you wish to join in either or both, please rise. <laughs> Please bow your heads. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a community, support each other in all our endeavors. Fill us with your grace and wisdom as we make decisions that affect all within our communities and throughout the county. And continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you and for the service of those that have entrusted us to do what is right. We ask that you guide and protect all that serve this country throughout the world and for those that serve and protect this community. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you both. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Bell. Curran. Here. Freeling. Present. Harrison. Here. Pinkelman. Here. Majeric. Here. Uh, here. Pitchford. Present. Walworth. Here. 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 Mr. Chair, we have 11 present. Thank you. Minutes from a week ago need to be approved. So moved. Moved by Freeling. Is there support? support. Supported by Curran. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Minutes are approved. Madam Clerk, have we any communications? None. Okay. Didn't think so, but wanted to make sure. Public comments about this lengthy list of resolutions that we have today. Just resolutions at this point. And that would include the added resolution that has to do with critical bridge funding. All right. Um, since there are no comments, we'll go right to the consent calendar. Looking for a resolution to approve the consent calendar, including the resolution ending in 4185. I will make Bless that you. motion to approve the consent calendar. Moved by Freeland. Added. Is there support? Support. Moved by Pitchford, or Freeling supported by Fitch, Pitchford. To, yeah, that's a new one. Um, almost said Pitchfork. I was out in our barn yesterday using one, so sorry. Um, so, so that's for both two that were there and then they added one for 185, right? Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Curran? Yes. Freeling? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Pinkelman? Yes. Jarrett? Here. Ah. Uh, yes. Pitchford? Yes. yes. <laughs> Balrath? Yes. Workle? Yes. Yarbrough? Yes. And Elliot? Yes. We have 11 yeas. We separate those two. Yeah, I know. Made a detention spot. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll begin committee report, reports with finance, Madam Chair of Finance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Art Administrator. This, that was in with us. And um, he talked about the um, MEC contract. Um, I'm, I'm trying to see here. That's not that, is it? It is. It's the yeah. um, RFP that yes. we received. And by the third week of April, that's just for Buchanan um, Charter Township. And um, then um, we had the um, Berrien County clerk, election clerk, came in to talk with us, Catherine Clemserud. Uh, we had a resolution. It's going to be voted this today or... Next, yep, next week, next week um, we received more money from the state of Michigan elections. Um, they sent money to, for us to do the first that first 
early voting. Now we're going to have early voting for all the regular uh, elections in August and November. And so um, the two uh, towns, I'm sorry, the two communities that chose to be out of that, that original um, early vote, Bainbridge and Benton Charter Township are going to continue on their own, but there was a need for some equipment that they needed, they realized. And so they put a letter in or a request in to our Marion County election clerk to get those things. We don't know how much we can get, but it's saying that it will, there, there are dollars for the counties all over Michigan to, to get the things that they need to be able to uh, do this early election. So it was very interesting and, and to listen to that. And the um, first one that they did worked out very well. They learned a lot and they're still, I think will be open for if people want to apply to be election clerks for all these different elections. Think about that. Um, if you have the time, if you're off work or if you're retired, that might be something you could um, easily do and we need that kind of help. I, I think about my mother. My mother and the, the ladies on our street um, were all election clerks and all the elections, all of them were held in schools. And my mother and her friends, it would be dark at five, they go about five o'clock in the morning and they'd walk up territorial up Morton Hill and go to Morton School. They didn't know how long they had to be there. They had no computers. They counted everything by hand and balanced and then took these papers to City Hall, which was back down the hill. You know, you know the proximity and, and the polling places were then in those days put in great places for the neighbors to be able to come because the majority of the people were walking. That's in the 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, like that. So that's a story. <laughs> um, then I wanna say that the um, next person that came in and talked to us was prosecuting attorney Pierre Angeli. And um, it's about the computer. We're with a company called JWorks. There is a company called Carpel. It's the best program for county prosecutor's office, the information. There are over 45 of our 82 counties will be on Carpel um, by 2025. And what um, our prosecuting attorney did was talk with Carpel. And it's going to be that if we pass a resolution um, by April 30th, I'm trying to see you anyway in the next 30 days until he yeah, explained that. Yeah, so the prosecutor has addressed both the admin committee as well as the finance committee. He is proposing to make a change in the, the, uh, the, the case reporting software that his office will use. Uh, the change will be to embrace the software that is being pushed by the Prosecutors Association for Michigan. The benefit to making this move is that he will have substantial offsetting revenue provided by the state of Michigan for the purchase of the software, as well as for funds over the next uh, couple of years for the software maintenance. The, the need to move this along is tied to um, the need for both communication back with the, uh, the state of Michigan, but also tied to uh, the county's mainframe. If we are going to get the information removed from the mainframe and onto the new um, reporting software, we will need to make that move as quickly as possible, ideally by the end of this month, as that will allow enough time for the outside vendor uh, access to the mainframe to get all of that information pulled and placed onto the new software um, software system. I can't stress enough that the mainframe, uh, as, as Ms. Matanki Haney mentioned this morning, we are making that initial move off of the mainframe and that work is occurring now. That work is being driven by the fact that we are on borrowed time with the mainframe. Uh, our IS department has made clear that at the end of this calendar year, that piece of equipment is no longer supported. That has very much lit the fire under court operations to get the, uh, the system up and running. And for the prosecutor's office, the intent is to make a move to this software system before the end of this month so that they have enough time to get all of their information pulled from the mainframe. I'm sorry if that was a little more wordy than, than necessary. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and we agreed when we looked at what the 
if we stayed with um, JWorks, who we're with and who has miss every, missed every deadline that was promised and needed since they've been working there, um, it would be so much more that we would have to pay. And we want to be through with them. I mean, no, we want to break a loose from them um, as soon as possible so that we can get this going. So there is a waiver that was connected with this that we um, concurred on and agreed. And so the finance committee felt like this was a good, the best thing to do as did all the other people around it, the set and, and uh, Sweetheart and Pam and all of those. And that's what it was. Yeah. And so that's, we did that and it's coming to you next week, the, the resolution. And then um, we talked with Don Trail, uh, building and grounds, and they're doing a lot with the parking lot, paving and striping at the health department. And what they have found, there is some more water or some more drains or something they're gonna to have to replace and work on. And the amount on that is, it's a $20,664 uh, additional cost to one of the Reith Riley um, construction proposals we had accepted. So there was that change and we all agreed um, that that needed to be done. So the parking lot can be fully open and fully done. I think we accepted our minutes and I think that's it. You, can you think of any other things? And we did have a guest in our, um, in our meeting. Thank you. Questions for finance. All right, Mr. Chair of Personnel and Human Services. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we also met this morning. Um, we had a number of, of action items for you to consider at a later date. Um, two resolutions, one for March per diems, as well as the um, approval for the Bike Michiana and Bike Oberfest um, event coming up in the fall. Um, we approved, you'll see those at a later date, uh, we approved the monthly pension refunds and rollovers, and then also approved a advanced step hire request from the health department for a new medical assistant. Um, we had a monthly, or monthly update from um, the health department, and it talked about the South County renovations in their area, um, CPR training, also mentioned the parking lot work that's already underway. And then we talked uh, briefly regarding um, the recruitment of a new uh, medical director. So that is under process now. Um, we had Jill and Jason come in from the parks department. They gave us an update on the Silver Beach traffic parking uh, project. Um, so I think the um, contract with Walker Consultants will be moving through the process here in a very short um, period. We also um, considered and will be recommending resolutions regarding um, some compensation changes for the prosecuting attorney's office, as well as in the trial court um, staffing. And so those will come to you at a later date. I believe our administrator will be shipping out some information to each of the commissioners um, going through that for your consideration. And then we had a, a delightful time talking to our chairman and administrator about a number of other issues that are coming to us at a later date. And that concludes our meeting. Questions for PHS. All right, Mr. Chairman of Administration. Thanks, Mac. Uh, first in to see us was Mark Heiliger, our road department director, and Commissioner Werfel would like to report out on that. Thank you. Um, they are continuing uh, the gravel road shaping, grading, pothole patching throughout the county, brushing and mowing, all of those fun things. So they, he updated us on some personnel vacancies, working on some seasonal positions and the, the engineering positions still. Um, culverts are about a third of the way done in inspection of 1,200 culverts throughout the county. Uh, so they are moving right along with that. Um, and then he also shared with us a flyer that is going to go out to the public um, in the uh, upcoming time frame. I don't know exactly when, but it's going to go. GIS is working on the areas specific to where construction is going on this year, and they, it'll be mailed to the households within construction areas so they can see when uh, projects are and what projects are in their area, which is a, 
uh, something they haven't done before, the road department hasn't done before. So exciting uh, coming out of there. That will be uh, upcoming probably late, late April, early March or early May. <laughs> Which way does it go? That's my report. Thank you, Julie. Um, Prosecutor Perangeli was also in to see us and talked about the uh, uh, Carpel versus the J work system. The only other thing that we asked him about was getting information on the compatibility between Carpel and the court system. Um, it can be done. It may not be done right away, but I think I, from what Steve said, it is uh, a possibility that that may occur in the future. And it was funny we asked a question about the mainframe because Dave Volrath and I have been hearing <laughs> for probably eight to 10 years now about us getting off of the mainframe. And, and it, it's a possibility that by the end of the year, we may be totally off the mainframe. So that's, uh, that's outstanding. But in the meantime, the mainframe J works is the one that communicates with the court. So you kind of got to keep it in the meantime. Uh, but uh, Steve talked to all three committees, so everyone I think is is pretty well informed on that. And and I see Brian's giving me eyes. Did you have a comment you wanted to make, Brian? Uh, <laughs> 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 you want me to make it? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just had leaned over and Mike off had said to Brian, you know, back in '91, we when when Mike Henry was here. We convened a big group down at the Cook uh, Center. You know, they had that room where they had public information sharing. We had everybody there. And we worked on establishing a relational database for Berrien County. I'm concerned that with Carpell and JWorks mm -hmm. not communicating with each other, we're losing something that we did before everyone in the state in the early 90s and to not be able to talk with each other and see what each other is doing in real time because sheriff courts prosecutor probation you name it could all do that losing that um and i no offense intended to the people who've worked on this but it just seems um illogical, for lack of a better word, to develop a new system that loses something that's basic to productivity. My thoughts. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, that's fine. Thank you. I appreciate the comments. Brian? I think that uh, Max's point is well made. It, there's a degree of uh, concern about the rollout of the, the, the go live, about our ability to make this new court reporting software work. For the prosecutor to make the decision to, to move in this direction, I completely understand and respect his position. The bulk of the prosecutors across the state of Michigan have gone with this product. The state of Michigan is offering to heavily subsidize it. So it, it's one that I understand what's driving the decision. And unfortunately, we're in a position where we just don't have time to allow for the bigger conversation. We are on borrowed time with the mainframe and the JWorks system has to be up and running. And um, when uh, the prosecutor reached out to me, he told me, he's like, you're, you're gonna hate this because the timing does stink. But um, the chairman's uh, statements I think are Pretty accurate. This is something that does cause concern. Yes, yes, I agree. Well, Thank and, you. And if I may, I'm not criticizing any of our uh, county officials. My criticism goes to Lansing because we communicated with Lansing what, three years ago, I think, as this thing was starting to get legs and starting to move. We said you need to develop systems that connect that can talk with each other because otherwise you're going to lose that real-time ability to share information to, to talk the dialogue electronically that you need to be able to have otherwise and we told them you know we still have three by five index cards in a drawer somewhere 
That's what we were doing back in the 80s. And um, it doesn't make sense to be regressive with a new technology. So long and short of it is we're going to have to develop programs to enable these systems to talk, to connect. We're going to have to make our own relational database. So just be prepared for that um, because otherwise we hamper the courts, the prosecutor, the sheriff, everyone. We're going to hamper their efficiency and their productivity. And that's bad business. And it doesn't make sense. Private sector would never do it this way because it's wasting money and there are opportunity costs. Time lost is an opportunity cost. Productivity lost is an opportunity cost. So I'll get off the soapbox, <laughs> but um, just be prepared. We're going to have something to do, something significant to do to unscrew something that they are screwing up in Lansing. Thank, thank you for your comments, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyone else have a comment? No, no. Well, when I first joined on the... As commissioner, the discussion was that mainframe was not going to last. You couldn't get parts. Now it's 10 years later, and will it last? Yeah. Will that... I mean, what if it does go down next week? Do they have plans for that? So, so yes. So your IS department has put together service agreements to take us through the end of the calendar year. They have stockpiled um, pieces and parts so that the IS department is saying that they will have that mainframe working for the county through the end of the calendar year. But it is an understatement to say that it is on borrowed time. We have to be off of the mainframe by the end of the calendar year. It is, it is a, a piece of equipment that is long past its user life. Um, our courts, our prosecutor understand that they have to move forward with these plans and that the data migration must occur this, this spring and this product has to be up and running in the summer into the fall. Thank you. Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, next, we had Don Trail uh, from Building and Grounds in to see us. Um, <clears throat> and I think, uh, I, I know Don went to finance. I don't know if he went to PHS. He talked to us about the jail boiler. Um, kind of a no brainer, either spend 500,000 or 51,000. We went with the 51,000 and he said they'd last another 40 years. So we were good with that. Um, he also talked to us about the parking lot at uh, the um, health department. And I think it's outstanding that they were doing some prep work and found a plug drain. That's been the issue out there. You know, the water table out there is pretty high anyway. That's all kind of swampy. But, you know, the water bubbling up and that this is probably going to cure that problem. I thought was outstanding. And we don't have to worry about it anymore. So we'll have a nice parking lot with good drainage. Um, we talked to Brian about, uh, the road department has introduced their three-year asset management plan. Uh, the admin committee wants to sit and talk with the road department and, uh, Brian about that. So we scheduled that for next Thursday, Otto Gras for 1130. <laughs> and I'm looking at Annette because we need to, uh, secure the room. Uh, we're just basically going to meet right after our regular meeting on Thursday and, uh, and discuss that. Um, also, uh, in that same vein, the Baroda garage, uh, you know, previously we have authorized them to purchase additional property in Baroda adjacent to the, to the uh, road department garage now. And this is to, uh, build a new facility on that property. Um, we have been talking about it for quite some time with Brian and with the road department. And we are at that point now to where this needs to come to the full board because we are going to commit some dollars for engineering, those type of things. But the funding piece has to be in this discussion. And so what we did is we asked Brian and Mark to put together something to bring to us at the Committee of the Whole. And again, you're giving me eyes, so I will defer back to Brian. Do <laughs> you have any further comments? Uh, 
Yeah, so members of the board, uh, admin wisely has suggested a committee of the whole topic to walk you through what is envisioned for the, the Broda Garage, why is there a need for the improvements at the Broda Garage, and then what is the, uh, the long-term benefit, uh, essentially putting together a design that is now somewhat modular and can be replicated for future garage projects. The admin committee has asked that prior to this project moving forward, that we have a lengthy meeting with the, uh, the full board so you all understand what's being envisioned. But then we spend a lot of time explaining how, a, um, if we were to issue bonded debt, how that would work, where the, uh, the pledged revenues would come from, and then what that means to the overall county should some type of uh, debt issuance be allowed to, to proceed. Um, what we talked about at the committee level is there's a lot of new faces that likely haven't gone through that process, but to some of the, the seasoned veterans, it's likely going to be different people that you're working with. Traditionally, you've, you've used a gentleman named John Axe. Um, the, the, the handoff uh, of the other uh, baton has largely occurred with his firm. So you're going to be seeing new faces, potentially a different process. And we wanna make sure that everyone has a high degree of comfort and understanding of what's being asked prior to any commitments being made for the design for the construction of this garage project. I would anticipate that this could be accomplished in not more than an hour and a half, but it was discussed at admin that if we were to schedule it for a standard committee of the whole to try and rush it through in 30 to 35 minutes just doesn't seem like the best idea. I'm gonna spend some time with the other chair talking through what's the best way to schedule this so that you all have an opportunity to ask as many questions that, that you, you need to ask. I appreciate summary. that. Yeah, I appreciate that, Brian, because you know we're gonna have other discussions about facilities and we all as a collective board need to see that vision and put this piece in with the other pieces to see how it's gonna work out. So we wanna make sure that we all have adequate time to discuss it. So I appreciate that, Brian. Okay, uh, next time we get together, we are going to have some resolutions for you. First one ending in 4180, this is for Red Bud. <laughs> <laughs> This is for the Sheriff's Department to provide additional police protection for uh, Buchanan Township. This is from July 3rd to July 7th at Redbud. You did it twice. Don't do that again. Don't do that again? Okay. Moving right along. Uh, resolution ending in 4181. Okay. This is a contract with Synthes for... Uh, maintenance of the eyewash stations at the road department garages. Right now, we do not have any contracts that uh, maintain that equipment, so this is to do that. Um, resolution ending in 4189. This is for uh, to apply for a grant from the uh, Michigan Office of Community Corrections, and this is from our Berrien County Community uh, Corrections to apply for that grant. And that is our report. Any questions for admin? Yes, sir. Can someone explain to me what red butt is? <laughs> um, it is a motocross race that happens out in Buchanan. Uh, they have multiple. It's uh, national normally a national and international right? race. Uh, around the 4th of July it's weekend. On TV. And, uh, but it's Red Bud Trail. It's a road. I'm That's showing my age. I get it. Or, or, no. or is it it's not Red Bud Trail? It is Red Bud yep. Trail Road. Is it yeah. cannabis yeah. also? Yeah. Is Red Bud? No, I don't know. Oh, I don't know about that. You, but you want me to say Red Bud again? <laughs> no, please go ahead. The way that Commissioner Kern said Red Bud, if you go out there to the racetracks, that's how it's said. Yeah. Red Bud. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to get back on track, but we're going to try. Commissioner reports clockwise. 
So I attended um, the Best Practices Committee for the Strategic Leadership Council, the Lincoln Township Board, um, a dedication of the main stage at Lake Michigan College for Rolf Jenkins, and then also participated in the recycling event out at the college. He got a chance to attend the Richard Hunt Memorial, and Commissioner Yarbrough can speak much more about it than I will, but it was an amazing event. The Board of Commissioners was recognized for our letter of support and also for naming April 24th, Richard Hunt Day. So great event, great art pieces, great story of a person and just being nationally recognized. I didn't know how many pieces he had, not just in the United States, but around the world. And one of his pieces, the farmer is in the oval, at the oval in the garden, in the Rose, Rose garden. garden. Went to the Hager Township board meeting. Coloma Library is having their 20th anniversary celebration on Thursday, April 25th from 1 to 4 p.m. So if anyone wants to attend that. And then I also got a chance to present at the Benton Harbor Public Library. Ashley Hines, Benton Harbor CDC, and then the Community Collaborative are helping and trying to assist with a search for a city manager in the city of Benton Harbor with Ellis Mitchell leaving that position. So I got a chance to just talk to the individuals about local government, state government, federal government, why a city manager matters, what federalism is, what boards, positions that can be open, what a city manager does, just to give everybody that context. And we had a very good discussion. Lots of good questions were asked. And it went all the way up to talking about, you know, county positions and what they do and how they impact local government. So I hope them the best of luck in this search. And hopefully there's just more civic engagement like this moving forward. Yeah. No, report. Report. no report. We do have Brownfield um, after this meeting. Can't get so lucky this week, sorry. <laughs> There's a BC bit meeting today after this uh, meeting, 12.30. Yesterday I attended uh, the Berrien Conservation District. He has a whole bunch of summer workshops, spring and summer workshops um, for beginner farmers and for those who um, need uh, pesticide license credits. And so they had a right to farm workshop um, they did discuss about MEEP, so I'll leave these items maybe out at the front table if anybody's interested in the workshops. There's a whole bunch more on just farmers markets and produce safety, things like that, and then information on MEEP. And um, I also get a planning commission meeting for the county. Um, we discussed some of the different master plans. Uh, Sodas Township is going to be doing a master plan update. Um, Village of Grand Beach has their master plan, and I'll make sure you get a link to that um, for update. Uh, we had some updates for the St. Joe Township master plan, and then we did review um, a conditional rezoning uh, for the property that you would know as, as the Nye Apple Barn. Um, our scope is really limited um, for this planning commission it's mostly advisory we look at what those different uh, benchmarks are there are seven questions if it falls within those parameters um, we we either concur or we don't uh, agree with the recommendation of the local planning unit and our recommendation was to concur with their approval and recommendation to move it forward to the township that was the planning commission meeting and that is my report you also at the Buffalo Township on Monday? Uh, I was at uh, Three Oaks Township, Three Oaks Township. On, on Monday. You're right. We were, uh, Three Oaks Township had, thank you, uh, had some discussion about broadband. Uh, they're mm -hmm. one of those municipalities that initially signed a letter of support for the um, Robin Grant application. And so MEC was there talking with leadership, um, just kind of helping to move that forward and answer any concerns or questions they may have. Thank you. Maybe. Thank you very much. Um, I attended the Richard Hunt um, celebration and um, there was one event at Anna Russo studio. And I talked about general things like how I call out the window when I'd see him walking from Mason jar, 
hello, Richard, look up. And he'd look oh. up, he said, Mamie, have a good day. <laughs> because he roamed our neighborhood. We knew when he was here. And um, he'd throw up the garage door and he may be in there putting around, not doing sculpture or anything, but looking for things or sending things somewhere. And he was just a true good neighbor. I live on this end of the building and he lived on the other end. And then we walked down the middle of Territorial in the, that 200 block to the end of the building to his um, studio. And it will still be called Richard Hunt Studio Center. And the garage door was up like I remembered because he'd have string cellos and different things there. And David Brock, our local musician, was at a baby grand piano playing music on this huge stage. And it has a frame around it, kind of. And Richard made that frame and it stays with the building. But there were so many people that were sitting on the stage. It was standing against the wall. There were chairs. The whole lower level was open and some maquettes and samples to see the things that he's done. And then they called the standard and that's at the Crasle, but they brought it uh, on territorial. So I don't know what they're going to do with the building, but I thank Annette so much for the resolution. I thank you all for uh, voting for that and agreeing to it. It said everything, it told everything about him because one of the quotes that I liked that he said was that, why Benton Harbor? He said, why not? There are so many opportunities in this, or in this community, so many opportunities. You usually see it, why? but it was IES and he worked them. If you look around and read those things, you'll know how many sculptures and the different things that he did in our, um, in our community. And then I had uh, from Laura Freeling, Register of Deeds, I asked her to look on the deed for this property to see if my name was on it. I was a member of the Benton Harbor Area School Board um, with that building. It was given to Benton Harbor. It was gonna be a job course center they did a lot of work, spent a lot of money on that building, spent a lot of money on the Benson Hotel. It was going to be the dorm because it was supposed to be Job Corps. And I told him, I may own this building. And so <laughs> we looked it and we found my name on here and made copies for the crowds that I have and hope they'll put it on the wall in there along with our resolution, Mamie Yarbrough. And I still write the same. And it was in 1984 or something like that. And um, I was a witness <laughs> to that this was being signed over from the school uh, or accepted from the United States government. So that's, thank you. <laughs> I had a good time. Okay, um, do you have anything? No, sir. Okay, so no administrator report today. We'll go to general public comments. Anything under the sun, two minutes or less, name in town, name in town, if you wish to opine. My name is Mike Schnabel. I'm from Shoreham. And I'm here to comment on the picture in the paper about our sheriff at a political event. Um, I've been here before and I've been in the paper a few times. I've also been the trustee for the village of Shoreham representing between eight and 900 people. I've also been the village president of Shoreham representing that same number of people. I am currently on the planning commission for St. Joe Tartar Township. I'm aware that we all have personal lives, that we all have political lives. And I also am aware that we take our oath of office to make sure that the people we represent, in this case, the county, that I'm commenting about, the 153 plus thousand deserve to know that we're not using our position to vote, you know, to promote our own political gain or personal gain. So I take personal exception, I guess, as a leader, that someone is giving the appearance in a, in a picture in a full uniform supporting a candidate. I, I, you all have personal lives. Again, you can all support in your personal life candidates, join organizations, and whatever. But being in a uniform at a political event is a whole different animal. I, I hope there's a policy in this county that you cannot do that. And that's what I'm here to speak to. So that's all I have. Oh, and one thing, I know how hard it is. I've submitted letters to the editor, uh, the, the local paper under my name, under my email address, and because I was the president of the village, they turned it around and added that, even though that was not the intent. So I'm aware of the fact that even good intentions of separating your personal life from your public life sometimes does not necessarily work. And you are always 24 by 7, that position, whether you like it or not. 
And so we owe it to the public to make sure that we're above, I guess, the appearance of impropriety. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to be heard? Yes, ma'am. My name is Val Schnabel. I, again, I'm in Shoreham, and yes, I'm related to him. But uh, I do want to agree with everything that Mike said regarding the sheriff's appearance at the uh, campaign rally. Uh, regardless of who we support uh, as individuals, we need to make sure that the people we serve have our trust. And when I saw that photo and then later saw TV coverage of it, I felt, gosh, do I really trust our sheriff's department if they come to my door? Will I feel comfortable answering the door? Um, there's a lot going on with political uh, entities. And I just really feel that um, if you are supporting somebody, no matter who, and you should go there and it's not as a paid service detail or something like that, then you should find your own suit and tie to wear to show up to that event. Um, and again, I support what Mike said previously because he took most of my notes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Travis Walker, uh, live in White Pigeon, but here as superintendent of Brandywine Community Schools. Just want to make the county aware that on the May 7th uh, ballot, there is a proposal from Brandywine Community Schools for a zero mill increase uh, for a, a school improvement bond. Uh, we are looking to extend our current 3.9 mil debt levy for 18 years. This no tax increase would bring in approximately, not to exceed uh, 22 million to the district. Um, I think of special relevance to the county. Uh, one, there's, there's about 11 projects that we would uh, improve throughout the district should the bond pass. But I think, again, most relevant to the county, looking to improve our CTE facilities. Um, we, are, we are limited in space. Uh, we are not ADA compliant right now. And we're, we're doing a great job of putting kids into industry. We want to keep these kids local um, to help support the area. But uh, right now, we, we do need to improve those spaces, especially our trades in terms of machine shop, our auto shop and our cabinet making and mill work. So just want to make the county aware um, that that proposal is on the May 7th ballot and it's a zero mill increase to, to extend the current 3.9 mill debt levy. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be here? Yes, sir. Dr. Hager. <clears throat> no, no. I go to South Shore, it's an athletic club. Guess who I saw there a couple of days ago? Paul Bailey. He is really working at it. I mean, he was sweating like crazy. He said he goes there five days a week. I was really surprised. He was glad to see me too. Anyway, I want my complaint, if you want to call it that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had too many people in this room. No, there's a limit to how many people you can put in here. I, wanna, I didn't see a sign. I asked for a sign on here. Don't you have an inspector or a fire chief or somebody coming around here and saying, uh, this room only holds 185 people, not 200 and whatever what we, what we had there. If we would have had a fire. You know, you guys put a bunch of chairs here. You got people standing around. Everybody would have run for the door. You could have had a lawsuit. Somebody got uh, lost it forever or nothing. If you have a, a number up here and somebody, look what we got the sheriff for, right? You should count and then don't let anybody else in. I suggest, I've been suggesting this for years, get a bigger room. This is a kindergarten room. How many times do you have to tell you that? You know, kindergarten room or first grade, you got 20 kids in there, you got a teacher in there with a mother helping out. So you got 22 kids in there. You know, one of the resolutions, building a bridge, it says uh, this bridge is uh, posted for 36 tons. How come they're putting that on the bridge? You got to put that on here, too. We're more important than the bridge. For two weeks ago, or four, a couple of months ago, when Paul retired, same thing. I mean, they were hanging on the rafters. You can't do that. There's a limit to how many people can be in this. This is a public building. Two minutes, sir. Mr. Peltzer. 
Anyone else wish to be heard? Yes, sir. George McManus, Benton Township. Uh, a few weeks ago, a lot of questions were asked in your open session uh, about the happenings at the drain office. And I just want to make a request since those questions were asked in open session. It would be nice if the answers came in open session so everybody heard the questions and we can hear the answers. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, Chuck Height, Sheriff. So I wasn't necessarily planning on speaking, but I just want to say one, I respect the, you know, the opinion that was done just to give a little bit of clarification that you don't see uh, on either the, the picture or whatever. Uh, sheriff's Cross is that we had a 45 minute uh, round table discussion before the event that was uh, put on there and I guess what I would say as your sheriff if I got the same invite from our current president that wanted to come to Michigan and meet with sheriffs I would absolutely entertain that opportunity I can't fix the border there is a crisis at the border all I can do is talk to the people who may be in position to do that but I truly respect uh, the, the opinion and right to that the only thing I will ask or I will clarify there's an issue that was talked about the Hatch Act the Hatch Act was talked by the Office of Special Counsel in 2012 and in 2018. Uh, the sheriff holding an office that's considered elected office is entitled for the uh, title and uniform uh, in there. So, um, you know, with that, just want to clarify that uh, I represent everyone, regardless of your flip backing. But I will tell you in our county, the increase we're seeing in fentanyl and meth uh, across the state, but in our county, is a concern for me for the public safety of the residents of Marion County. Very good, thank you. Any other public comments? All right, that's closed. Other business? Anyone have any? Ma'am. Since we have the superintendent of Brandywine here, I mean, it's worthwhile to just say a congratulations yeah, I don't to know your that. men's basketball team and the women's basketball team for the success of the a state, state championship, championship and first runner up to state championship. That's amazing. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh, wow. Something in the water out there. Yeah, apparently it's the well water, I keep telling you. Um, how long does it take to get to work every day from White Pigeon? About 40, 45. Well, with the, with the construction one, it's about 45 minutes. Yeah, that's not too bad. So. Okay, um, any other? There's a chili cook off in Buchanan today. Oh. 430. So come come hungry and get whatever some Zantac in you or something at least 30 minutes prior. Um, and if you come, I will be there as one of the judges. So how can you miss that now? Anyway. Um, <laughs> not that much. And it's installments. So uh, other business is done, I guess. Announcements, reminders. You already mentioned the meeting this afternoon. Is it Brownfield? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then PC the bit also. Okay. Um, we're going to have a closed session. It has to do with, I think, Freedom of Information Act matters, but it's under the attorney client. Privilege, Michigan compiled law 15.268 parents small H, I believe. I've never dealt with it before. But I think that's what it is. Anyway, after we're done, I had been asked if there was going to be any other business. And I didn't think there would be, but I would qualify now by saying when we come back into open session, we may be voting on what to do with a FOIA appeal. And that would be the only thing that we'll, we would be doing if we, when we come back into open session. S sir, would you feel comfortable if we shut down the Zoom and just allowed any uh, any action to just be noted in the record? What all? What do you think? Is that okay? Okay. All right. Motion to go into closed session. 
motion to go into closed session Second. under the attorney client privilege made by Werfel, seconded by Majeric. Any discussion? Uh, 